Hello lovelies. I've been getting lots of questions about the word trees, so I decided to try and create a short instructional video for you to walk you through the process, especially at the beginning. Um, when this is new, it can be intimidating, but once you get in the swing, I think you'll find it's very easy, especially if you don't wait until the night before it's due to do it. I'm going to pretend I'm in block seven um, for today. And if you look under homework, the first thing that you want to do is actually click on the assignment and read all the directions. So we'll click on the assignment here, and let's read the directions. It says, to expand your vocabulary and better understand how roots carry meaning, complete a word tree for each of this week's roots. Click here to access examples and templates of word trees, or you can go to Files, Vocabulary, Latin and Greek Roots. You may use the templates provided or draw your own. You are not required to complete this assignment digitally. Reminder, if you need to print, you must print your assignments before you come to class. I will not permit you to print during the class period. You should have a word tree completed for each of the following roots. Ab, abs will be one tree. Your second tree will be ad. Third tree, by and bice. Fourth will be circum. Fifth will be com and con. Sixth will be day. Seventh will be dis, diff or die. Eighth will be epi. Nine will be equi. 10 will be X and E. The trees will be graded on completeness. So you should have 10 total with three related words and sentences. Complete sentences giving words definitions. The words selected um, that do use the root. So for example, the word pretty has the letters P-R-E in it, but it doesn't contain the root pre because it doesn't carry the meaning of the root before. Additional words from team members will be included and that will be done in class before your quiz. So now that I've read all the directions, I'm going to follow the link so that I can access examples and templates of word trees. So I'm going to click the click here link. A new window will open and you can see this automatically takes me um, to a file where I can get the examples and different versions of templates. You'll notice there are two versions of the template. One is a Word document. If you do have Word at home, great. If you don't, then there's a PDF um, document. This would be useful for you if you have Apple or Mac at home. Let's look at the example first. Okay, now this is just an example of the root tree for the root epi. Um, so the first thing that you will do is on your tree you will write the root epi and then you will write the root's definition. Then using Google or a dictionary or a dictionary app you want to try and search for words that use that particular root. So I did a quick search for this example and I found the words epicenter, epiglottis, and epidermis. Now when I find those words, usually I'll be finding them in a dictionary or on a website that will automatically give me the definition. If it doesn't pop up on a site with a definition, feel free to look up that definition. I want you to know what the word means. I don't want you to guess. Once you find that definition, you want to paraphrase it or put it in your own words, okay? So when I look up the definition for epicenter, let's type in epicenter and see what comes up, okay? All right, here's an, a couple different definitions. I can choose one. Let's go with Merriam-Webster. Now when I look at this, it says the part of the Earth's surface that is directly above the place where an earthquake starts the epicenter of world finance and I have all these definitions I need to do one of two things in order to put a sentence on my tree I need to paraphrase the definition and put it in the form of a sentence or I need to use the word in a sentence so if we go back to my example tree you'll see I did not say exactly what Merriam-Webster said if I did do that, I would be plagiarizing. You need to make sure things are in your own words. And we'll talk more about e how even when they're in your own words, um, you do need to cite where you got them. For this assignment, I am not requiring you to cite where you got your words from, but I do expect that you will paraphrase them and put them in your own words. So on this example, I just wrote a sentence that gives a definition in my own words. So I said the epicenter, of an earthquake marks the spot on the map where it originated. Notice I have the word that I selected in bold. You can highlight or underline. And then you want to underline in your sentence the part of the definition that shows 
the definition of the original root word. This is a way of proving and double checking that the word that you've selected does in fact use the root. Because remember, I mean the word help has EP in it, but it has nothing to do with the root epi. So always make sure that you underline that um, as a double check. So epi means on or on top of, and my definition has a phrase on the map, so that's what I underlined. Okay, and I did the same thing for my other two words. So notice I have my word, and then I have my sentence. And I would prefer that you try to use the word in an original sentence of your own, but if you can't come up with it in a sentence or you feel like you don't understand it well enough to uh, use the word creatively in a sentence, again, all you have to do is to define it. So my example here is the epiglottis is cartilage that sits on the top of the back of your tongue and keeps you from breathing in your food. Notice, if I type in epiglottis, Merriam-Webster, I'm going to get a very complicated definition. A thin plate of flexible cartilage in front of the glottis that folds back over and protects the glottis during swallowing. Whoa, I don't even know what a glottis is. If I were to see this type of language, cartilage, glottis, on your paper, it's pretty easy for me to see that you just copied and pasted or you just copied down exactly what you found on the internet. So please remember, we're paraphrasing. Don't forget, Highlight or underline your word and always underline the part of the definition that shows the meaning. So again, you see I have sits on top. So my full sentence is capitalized, it's punctuated, and it says the epiglottis is cartilage that sits on the top of the back of your tongue and keeps you from breathing in your food. My last example here, epidermis. So again, if I type in epidermis, let's do another quick search. Okay. Ta-da! I am not going to want to put on my paper the outer epithelial layer of the external integument. What? What does that mean? Okay, I need to find a way to put it in my own um, language. So when you're looking at a really difficult definition like this one, epithelial, like what does that mean? Okay, so I can try typing that in and see if I get a definition that will help me paraphrase it of or relating to the epithelium, let's keep clicking, a membranous cellular tissue that covers a free surface or lines a tube or cavity. At this point, I'm frustrated as a student with Merriam-Webster. So it's okay if you get really stuck to type in a question, what is the epidermis? And now I have a de definition that's a little bit easier for me to process. Okay, the outer layer of cells covering an organism. And of course, that would be your skin, right? Um, and you can see there's another one from Wikipedia here. Just be careful with Wikipedia. Remember, anybody can go in and change it. So sometimes the information on there isn't reliable. So just keep that in the back of your mind, okay? Notice, I am always going to paraphrase. I didn't write any of these on my tree. All right, hopefully this helps and gives you an idea. Now what I'm going to do, you can stop the video now if you feel good, if, if you think you have it, or I'm going to continue and I'm actually going to do um, a tree for the root ab. So I click here and I'm going to down tree, download the root tree template. By the way, you don't have to do this. You don't have to type on this. Um, you don't have to... Um, print it out. You can draw your trees or if you decide that you don't like trees, so long as you have the content, I'm a happy camper because what you're learning is really what uh, is most important. Also, if you sit down, a tip, if you try to do all your word trees at one go in one sitting, it's probably going to take you some time. I would say that it would probably take you approximately 50 minutes to an hour. I'm going to make my view a little bit bigger so it's easier for you to see. So this is my template. So I'll type in my name. I'll type in the date. Type in the block. Let's just say block one. And I won't type anything in the score because that's for Misty. And then, of course, we are on week one. Now I need to start finding roots. So where do I start? Well, the first thing that I'm going to want to do is go to my notes, the notes that you took on your roots. Now, if you lost your notes or you still haven't taken them, there are a couple different places that we can get it. 
Um, if you go into Files and Vocab, I'll go the whole way back, that way you can see this, where it is. Okay. Um, you'll click on Vocab, Latin and Greek Roots, and you have a couple different options here. You can look at just the notes for week one, or I actually give you a master's list, uh, which has all the roots in one convenient location. And you can see, all right, these are all my ones for week one. So I'll be like, okay, my first one is add. So on my tree, I would delete the word root, and I would type ab, ab. And then I will put the meaning. And the meaning is away from. And now I need to find three words. So how will I do that? I'm going to load back up Google, and I'm going to do a quick search for words that use the root ab, ab. And I should have some different things come up. Okay, so I'm just going to pick any one of these and see what I come up with. All right, and bing, bang, boom, I have five words right there that I could choose. So I might, and this site is great because it actually already gives me um, the definition. So I would type my first word, abdicate. Then maybe I would choose abduct. Then I would choose, let's do abhor. That sounds like fun. All right. Now I have my words, it's time for me to do my sentences. Um, now you'll see the directions that are here says, write a sentence that defines the word and shows the meaning of the root. Highlight or underline the word and the meaning of the root. Now, you can just define the word if you want, but remember, I can't just lift the definition from here. To take away to an undisclosed location against their will and usually in order to extract a ransom. To be honest, that's not the best definition anyway. So you wanna always put it in your own words. So if I were going to define abduct in my own words, I might write something like this. Um, I have a sentence. Now, I've given the definition, it's in my own words, but I'm still not done. I need to somehow highlight the word that I used, and then I need to prove that I've used ab or abs by showing that meaning in the word's meaning. So this means away or from, they're going to take him away, and I'll underline that. Bam. Now, this is fine, but I would prefer, if you can, try to use the word in a sentence. This shows me a more sophisticated level of your thinking, and later in the year, you will be required to do this. So, abdicate. Let's review what that one means. It says, to give up such as power of monarchs and emperors to use their obligations. Now, if I still didn't understand this definition, I could do another search and see if it's defined in a way that's easier to understand somewhere on the web. Um, and once I understood the word, then I try to use it in a sentence. So, the... King abdicated his throne when he became too ill to rule. Now, the king abdicated his throne when he became too ill to rule. I've used the word well, but I don't have anything that I'm going to be, be able to underline to prove the meaning of the word. So I need to revise my sentence a little bit. The king abdicated his throne... Okay. And again, this is just an example, and you might find yourself revising a little bit. The king abdicated and gave it away to his daughter when he became too sick to rule. Now I want to highlight my word, abdicated. And then I want to be able to prove that it does use the root, and I've proven that by my context clue away. All right. Hopefully you're getting the idea, but I'll do one more in case you need one more example. Abhor. 
Abhor is to find repugnant. Well, I don't know what repugnant means. Let's pretend that I'm you and I wasn't sure what repugnant means. So, repugnant. Extremely distasteful, unacceptable, in conflict, in conflict with. I'm going to do a straight up search for abhor to see if I can find a better definition. To regard with disgust and hatred. And then they give me an example sentence. I abhor the taste of liver. So abhor must mean like you hate something so much that it causes you to move away from. And if you see in all my synonyms here, it says shrink from, recoil from. It's a good tip. When you type in a word, always check out the synonyms because sometimes they will give you automatic context clues you can build into your sentence from, uh, sentence to give your context clues. So let's try this. Um, I could tell he abhorred uh, the smell of fresh seafood because he Boom. Okay. I could tell he abhorred the smell of fresh seafood because he ran away from me after I tried to serve him sushi. Now, there's one main problem in the sentence. Yes, I used the word. I've given some type of context to show that it does use the root. And I, I think I have pretty good details here. Seafood and sushi. And it makes sense. The problem with this is, who in the world is he? Never use a pronoun without giving a noun first that it refers to. So I'm going to go ahead and give he a name. I'm going to say Rob. Okay, so never ever use a pronoun without giving an antecedent or the word it refers to first. So now I have, I could tell Rob abhorred the smell of fresh seafood because he ran away from me when I tried to serve him sushi. Bam, and I am done with my tree. Now you can see I did this pretty slowly because I was talking you through that. Um, but I think... Um, when you sit down to do them, each one of your trees will take you about, I would say, maybe five minutes a piece. Um, if you're spending, you find you're spending 15 minutes or longer on it, you're probably spending or wasting too much time looking for the perfect word. Um, if you need any help with this after watching the video, please feel free to come see me. I can show you some more examples and sit down and walk you through the process one-on-one. -on -one. I'll see you in class, Nugget. Do your homework. And remember, this is a great review for your vocabulary quiz. I'll see you in class. Bye.